Hi guys, it is quiz day. Hooray. Um, the quiz is over 6-1 to 6-4. Um, I'm going to go over some questions from your 6-4 homework first. And then uh, once we're done with that, I am going to record a video of the 6-1 to 6-4 review. Um, I feel like some of you would probably prefer to just do it on your own or with a partner. And some of you would probably prefer to watch my video of it. So I'm not exactly sure what I'm going to have you do yet. Um, I'm going to think through that in the next couple days here and let the sub know. So um, we'll see what happens after this. Um, but we're going to start going over uh, number 14 first here from the homework. Drag this over here. Um, when you are solving a problem like this, okay, remember as long as your base is the same, you're allowed to just add these exponents. So if you think about that, that's negative three. One third plus one third plus one third is three thirds. Well, another way to say three thirds is one, right? So negative three to the first power, this would be negative three. That's probably how I would do that one. I feel like that one, um, that's how it makes the most sense to me. Um, but if you did it a different way, that doesn't mean it's wrong. As long as you're getting to that negative three, that's okay. Um, number 18, here's what I would do with this one. Um, you have three to the one fourth times 27 to the one fourth. So if you multiply that, remember if your exponent's the same, you can multiply it. So the other way you could have done this one, right? They're all to the one third power. So negative three times negative three times negative three, that's a negative 27 to the one third power. Um, that's the cube root of negative 27, which is negative three. That's what I'm gonna do over here. So on number 18, I'm gonna take three times 27, which is 81 to the one fourth power. Um, if we rewrite that as a radical expression, that's the fourth root of 81. Remember on your calculator, you're gonna go four math five, and that will turn it into a fourth root, and then 81, if you don't know it off the top of your head, um, and that is three. Okay, so that's number 18. Um, number 20 is x to the one-fifth power. I'm just going to do it right here because this doesn't take up a lot of space. Um, x to the one-fifth power. Remember, the power is on top. Um, the root is on... That's not how I want to write it. The power is on top. Oh, my goodness. The root is on bottom. Um, so this is a fifth root of x to the first power. You don't need that one, so we would just call it a fifth root of x. Okay, that would be number 20. Um, 24, so that's t to the negative three-fourths power. Um, first of all, we don't want negative exponents ever. So when you see the negative, you're gonna flip it. One over t to the positive three-fourths power, and now you can think of it as a radical. So it's still gonna be a one on top, um, remember the power, so t to the third power, and this is the root, the index. So take the fourth root of that. You can write it like that. Um, you can write it like that, okay? They're the same thing. I like this one better because, you know, less stuff there, but that's up to you what you prefer. Um, okay, number 28. How about, it says write each expression in exponential form. So now it's the radical and we're trying to turn it into the exponent. Um, this one we would do, it's a square root, right? And there's two pieces here, okay? We want to simplify both and put them both into exponential form. So a square root, remember whenever it's a square root, it's a one half power. So this is gonna be seven to the one half power. And then X, and again, it's basically saying x to the third to the one half. Well, we can just multiply those. So it'll be x to the three halves power. Um, so that is your simplest answer. Seven to the one half times x to the three halves. And you'll just leave it like that. Okay. Um, you know what, let's do number 30 while we're at it because this one is very similar. Notice this and this. I just want you to see the difference here. 
Um, so it's taking this whole thing, the square root of 7x, to the third power. Um, so if we simplify it, basically we're saying 7x to the one half power, right, is the same as this. Um, but then we need to take that whole thing to the third power. So this one is actually 7x to the 3 halves power. Um, you don't need to distribute that 3 halves to both of them. That's what the parentheses is doing for you. Um, so you would just leave it be like that. Okay, um, 34, you have the cube root of 5xy to the 6th power. Um, now for this one, you are essentially going to take everything 5xy um, to the 6th power and then take the cube root of that, but you can also think of it like this, okay? This is a third root, a cube root, and it's to the 6th power. Because we're taking everything to both of those things, you can right off the bat write it like this, 5xy the whole thing to, now think about what power that would be. This is power over root to the six thirds power. So really it is just five X Y to the second power. Okay. Um, now if you distributed this first and then took the third root, the cube root of everything, you would get there. That's fine. This is just one way to get there. So when we simplify this, 5 squared is 25, and then we have x squared, and we have y squared, and that's as simple as you can go with that. That will be your answer. All right, moving on. Um, number 48. So 64 to the 2 thirds times 64 to the 2 thirds. Um, the way I would probably do this is I would add my exponents here because we have the same base, okay? I would probably make this 64 to the 4 thirds power. Um, and then from there, what you can do is break it down into radical form. So this is going to be the cube root of 64 and then take that to the fourth power. So if you were to plug this into your calculator, the cube root, so math four of 64 is four, and then take four to the fourth power and you get 256. Okay, I would love to see that you got to this point and then gave me your answer rather than just plug this whole thing into your calculator. I want just to know that you're understanding the process. So just show me what you're doing along the way. That's helpful. Um, okay, number 50, you have a negative 32 to the 6 fifths power. So remember, root on bottom. So this is a fifth root of negative 32. And then I'm going to take that whole thing to the 6th power. And again, you can do it the other way. You can take the fifth root of negative 32 to the sixth power if you want, but that gets you a really big number to fifth root. I would rather do it this way because I know without having to plug it into my calculator what this is. If you don't, that's okay. If you want to plug this into your calculator, you do math five and then negative 32 and then hit enter and you get negative two. Okay, so this is negative two to the sixth power. Don't forget those parentheses if you're gonna plug it in. Um, negative two to the sixth is 64. So this would equal 64 on number 50, okay? Uh, let's see, 56. Um, oh, this one's fairly lovely. You have a negative four sevenths, sorry, super blurry, negative four sevenths, and then we're taking it to the seventh power. So you can just multiply those powers right there. Um, when you do that, you get x to the negative fourth power, right? The seven over seven is one. x to the negative fourth is one over x to the positive fourth power, and that is your answer. All right. 
almost there. I'm gonna do two more with you and then we'll do the worksheet. Um, oh, this is terrible. I don't even know what those are. I think this is two thirds and this looks like one sixth and negative 12. Sorry, apparently I didn't take very good pictures for you. Um, okay, so for this one, you have a couple options. Um, it's a negative 12th power. You could flip the whole thing right away and make it a positive 12th power. That's what I would do. I just, I like to get rid of the negative right away. So I would go one over and now I'm gonna distribute a positive 12 to both of these, right? We're gonna ignore that because we're flipping it to the bottom. So um, x to the 2 thirds times 12 would be 24 thirds, right? Which you can just write as eight right off the bat. I'm just doing it for those that wanna see it this way. And then y to the 12 over six would be the second power, sorry, 12 over six if you wanna see where I'm getting it. Um, so you would get on this one, uh, oh, this is not what the book is saying. I missed something. I think maybe there was a negative. Oh, there's a negative right there. Shoot. Okay. Um, if you do it the way I did it, missing the negative, it would be X to the eighth, Y to the second. Um, apparently this is a negative. So if you saw that negative when you did the problem, um, then that would actually have to stay on top. So it would be y to the second over x to the eighth. Um, but again, that's however you saw the problem. If you saw the problem the way I did without the negative right here, this is your answer. If you saw the problem with the negative, this is your answer, okay? Technically, this is the correct answer, but I don't know what that looked like in your book pages, if it was clear for you or not. So my apologies. Um, okay, 64, x squared over x to the negative 11th and taking everything to the one third power. Um, so if we simplify this, I would probably, what would I do first? I would probably do this first. Okay, they're both x's. Um, so two, minus a negative 11 is actually going to turn your thing here into two minus a negative 11 is a positive 13. So x to the 13th power to the one third power. Okay. Um, and then from there, now all you have to do is multiply those. So that's x to the 13 over three power and you're done. Okay. Um, so that is just going over some of the homework questions. Hopefully that made sense to you. Um, why don't you take a quick little stretch, move around break, um, and the sub can tell you what you're doing from here since I haven't made up my mind yet today. <laughs> um, it's only Tuesday for me, and you're doing this on Thursday. So um, I'm going to think through if I want you to just do the worksheet with me or if you're gonna do the worksheet in groups and then um, whoever wants to watch the video could watch it on their own. We'll see. Um, take a little break. Okay, so the review six one to six four, um, this kind of talks you through like each section at a time. So the first section, 6-1, that was roots and radical expressions. Um, basically finding the real nth roots of something. So what we're going to do, um, it says simplify each radical expression if possible. Um, so number one, this is where we broke it down into the perfect and the not so perfect. Um, so starting with this guy here, we're going to break that down into what perfect square is 96 divisible by. Um, again, if you're stuck on how to find this, you are literally gonna plug into your calculator. Remember we did all the perfect squares, four, nine, 16, 25, 36, 49, 64, 81, and 100, okay? You're gonna take that 96 and you're gonna go 96 divided by and figure out what makes sense. 100 doesn't make sense, 81 doesn't make sense. 64 doesn't make sense. Um, 
if you're not sure, maybe start here. 96 divided by 49, not a whole number. 96 divided by 36, not a whole number. 96 divided by 25, not a whole number. 96 divided by 16 is, it's a six, okay? So 16 and six is what you would do there. Um, and now remember, your index, your root is a two. So this number needs to be divisible by two to be a perfect square. So we're gonna take the next number below that to make it an even, x to the fourth. And then this is gonna be just one x left over, x to the first, which you don't need the one. Y to the eighth, we can take all of that. Um, so it's gonna look like this, and now we simplify. So the square root of 16 is four. The square root of x to the fourth is x squared. The square root of y to the eighth is y to the fourth, right? You're just dividing by that number each time. And then you have the square root of six x. Okay, so that would be your answer on that one. Uh, number two, this setup, um, if you take 216 and you divide by eight, you actually get 27. So I would do that first, the cube root of 27 x to the fourth and then simplify that so we can actually take the cube root of 27 but we can't take the cube root of x to the fourth so cube root of 27 this is technically a one on the other side you don't need to write that in this would be x to the third to be able to divide by three excuse me which means you have one x left over here so simplify that Cube root of 27x to the third is going to be 3 times x, and then you still have the cube root of x over here. So this is your simplest answer. Okay. All right, number three. Um, this one's a fifth root, and some of this you can take fifth root of and some you can't. If you're not sure on the number, try it first. So this would be five math, five, 32. Check, can you actually take a fifth root of 32? You can, that works out to two, okay? So the whole 32 is gonna go on the perfect side. So yes, we can take a fifth root of that. Can you take a fifth root of x to the third? No, you cannot. Can you take a fifth root of z to the fifth? Yes, you can. So that's the perfect one, okay? So now do it. Fifth root of 32 is two. The fifth root of z to the fifth, remember you're just doing z to the five over five. That's a one, so you're left with a z. And then you have the fifth root of x cubed. So that'll be your answer. Okay, so that's six one material. Um, then we have for 6, 2, multiplying and dividing radical expressions, okay? It says multiply or divide if possible, then simplify. Um, you cannot have radicals in the denominator ever in a final answer. So make sure if there is one in the denominator that you rationalize, you get it out of there. Did you want to say hello, Kenzie? Oh, no. She doesn't want to say hello. She just wants to sigh. <laughs> okay. Um, number four. So we're gonna first do some multiplication on this one. If we multiply these two things together, because they're both square roots, we can do that. Um, 40 times eight is 320. And then x to the fifth times x squared, you're just adding those together, x to the seventh. And now let's break it down. Okay, so again, think about what perfect square is 320 divisible by. Um, and you might think of 16 here because 32 times or divided by two is 16, right? So it's tempting to go, oh, it's 16 and what would that be? 16 and 20, but then the 20 would have to be broken down more. Okay, mommy's recording, okay? Um, so instead, look a little higher. That's why I always say start high and work your way down. 64 actually works here. Um, so if we do 64 times five, we get 320. That's a better answer. Um, and then X to the seventh, you're gonna do X to the sixth so that we can divide by two. Um, Cause remember these are both twos. And then that would leave us with one X over here. 
Okay, um, so simplify that. Square root of 64, you get eight. The square root of x to the sixth, you get x to the third. And then it's times the square root of five x. And that is your final answer. All right, number five. This one, cube root of all of that. Um, we're gonna simplify by multiplying it together first. So the cube root of 16 times two is 32. X to the fifth times X to the third. You add those together, X to the eighth. And then Y to the fourth times Y would be Y to the fifth. So now break it down, perfect cubes, not so perfect cubes. Um, so for 32, now remember it's cube roots. Remember cube root wise, two times two times two, we get eight. Um, three to the third power, you get 27. Four to the third power, you get 80, uh, 64, sorry. Um, and so on and so forth. So that's what we're looking for. 32 is divisible by which of those? Well, it is divisible by eight and it's eight times four. Okay, now this x to the eighth has to be divisible by three also. So the lowest or the highest under eight that we can go is going to be x to the sixth, which means you have x squared left. And then your last one, y to the third is going to leave you with a y squared over here. Um, so now from here, simplify what we can. Cube root of eight is two. This is x to the six divided by three, so x squared, and then y to the three divided by three is y to the first, and then you take the cube root, don't forget this guy, he gets left off a lot, um, of four x squared y squared, and that is your answer. All right, number six. Um, divide this first. So this is gonna be the square root of 36. This, is x squared, right? You just subtract. So the square root of 36 is six, the square root of x squared is x, and you're done. Quick one. All right, um, number seven here. These ones we have to rationalize. Um, remember when we rationalize, especially when it's a cube root, this one's kind of high, um, we wanna make it something when we multiply these two parts that we get a perfect cube right here, okay? So think about it this way. Um, it's gonna be something over itself, first of all. So this is an x squared. If we wanna take a cube root, we would multiply by x to get x to the third, okay? This is y, so we would wanna multiply by y squared to get y to the third. So that means this is gonna be x y squared here. Um, and now we can multiply across. So up top, you have the cube root of 3xy squared. Okay. On bottom, we can actually take that cube root for both of those. So our numerator is still going to be this. But our denominator, the cube root of this, is just x times y. And that is your answer. Can't simplify your x's and your y's there because one's in a radical and one is not. So leave it like that. All right, this one. I would start this one um, just simplifying as much as we can first. So um, can't get rid of the five or the two. So it's still gonna be five and two. But this is gonna be x squared up top. And this... Um, 3 minus 1 is going to be y squared on bottom. So now when we try to simplify, we can actually take some square roots here. Um, the square root of x squared is x, but we still have the square root of 5. The square root of y squared is y, and we still have the square root of 2. So now this is a much simpler problem than if we were just to try to multiply by all of that. Okay, um, instead we can just multiply by rad two over rad two to get rid of that denominator radical. Um, so up top you have x times the square root of 10. On bottom, rad two times rad two is two, and we still have the y. 
and that is your simplest, okay? Um, okay, if you're watching this video as an entire class, I don't know if you are or not because I haven't made up my mind, um, but if you are, stop, pause, take a little stretch break, move around a little bit. It's been a little while. All right, I took my break. Um, on to six, three, number nine. Um, we are going to simplify as much as possible and then just keep in mind, no radicals in the denominator. So we gotta ditch those eventually um, if there are any. So number nine, this first one, um, we cannot add radicals that are different. So we need to simplify our radicals here first and then we can uh, keep simplifying from there. So this is gonna be what's a perfect square, what's not, what's a perfect square, what's not. Don't forget our friends out in front, the five and the four, okay? Um, so 16, that would be, sorry, <laughs> 32 would be 16 and two. And then the X has to go here on the non-perfect side because we can't take the square root of that. Um, 98 is uh, divisible by the perfect square 49 which leaves us with 2x. So simplify that. 5 times the square root of 16 is 5 times 4, so 20 times the square root of 2x, plus this is 4 times 7, so 28 times the square root of 2x. And when you simplify that, you get 48 times the square root of 2x. Okay. Uh, number 10, what do we do with that? Really wish I could hear your answers right now. That'd be way more fun. Um, these ones, be careful. It almost looks like they're conjugates, but they're not because this, right? One's plus, one's minus, but you also have a two in there that you don't have on the other one. So they're not conjugates. You can't use a shortcut. Um, instead, you're gonna have to foil it. So the square root of three times the square root of three is just three, right? Square root of nine, which is three. Square root of three times two rad seven is a positive two rad 21. Um, this is a negative rad seven times rad three, so minus rad 21. If you wanna put a one in front of there to help you remember it's one rad 21, you can, you don't have to. Um, and then our last, you have a negative rad seven times two rad seven. Um, so that's gonna be minus two rad 49, okay? Um, so simplify that. 2 rad 49 is 2 times 7, right? So it's minus 14. So you have 3 plus 2 rad 21 minus rad 2 uh, rad 21. So that's going to be plus rad 21 minus 2 times 7. And then just simplify that. 3 minus 14 is a negative 11 plus the square root of 21. That's as far as you can go. Don't combine those because one's a radical and one is not. All right, and then number 11 um, is the one that you are going to multiply by the conjugate of the denominator. So it's 2 plus rad 3. We're going to multiply by 2 minus rad 3. 2 minus rad 3. So on top and bottom, okay? Um, if it helps you to visualize it with parentheses around those, you can do that too. Um, on bottom then, this is the shortcut. Remember the shortcut? It is a squared minus b squared. So for the shortcut here, you're gonna take your a value and square it minus your b value and square it, right? So basically what we're doing here for our denominator is four minus the square root of three squared is three. So you should be getting a denominator of one, which is nice, which means you don't even need to write it as a fraction in the end, because um, it's over one. Up top, we need to FOIL. So it's gonna be first is eight. This is not gonna fit well, I'll try and squeeze it. Um, minus four rad three, remember, because this is minus, minus four rad three plus two rad six, 
And then this is going to be the square root of 6 times the square root of 18. Um, and it's minus the square root of 18. Okay. Um, so you have all this. Well, we can simplify the square root of 18 to the square root of 9 times the square root of 2. Um, and like we said, this is all over 1. So you could put it here, but you're still going to simplify it further to just that number by itself. So 8 is our only whole number. Um, then we have a square root of 3, we have a square root of 6, and we have a square root, so this is 3 rad 2, a square root of 2. None of those are combinable. So your answer is going to be 8 minus 4 rad 3 plus 2 rad 6 minus 3 rad 2. And there's nothing else you can simplify about that. It's all over 1, so you don't need to put it over 1. Just leave it like that. All right. Okay, home stretch, 6, 4. Um, so this number 12, we're going to just simplify this expression. 3 to the 1 third times 9 to the 1 third. Um, we're going to think of that as the cube root of 3 times the cube root of 9. Okay, well, what that is then, if you multiply these, you get the cube root of 27 and the cube root of 27 is 3. Okay, remember cube root in your calculator, math 4 um, is cube root. You're welcome to plug that into your calculator if you can't remember it. Um, 13 says convert from exponential form to radical form or vice versa. So we're just switching the form that it's in. Um, remember the root is on bottom, so this is your root or your index. This is your power. So this is going to be a fourth root of y to the third power. Now, you may write that third power inside here, or you may write it outside like that. Okay? Either one is fine. Okay. Um, letter B. It's x to the negative 9 eighths. So we're going to start by flipping it. So 1 over x to the positive 9 eighths, and then use your power and your root to rewrite this. So this is going to be an eighth root. Let's move it over so I have room here. Um, here, we'll go here. 1 over the eighth root of x to the ninth power. And again, write it inside, write it outside, um, but this is not your simplest form right now, right? Technically, you could break this into the eighth root of x to the eighth and the eighth root of x to the first. Um, so really, the best way to write this one, I'm running into my other one here, would be 1 over the eighth root of x to the eighth is just x. And then this we can't do anything with. So eighth root of x, and that will be your simplest answer. Okay, um, letter C, sorry about the mess here. This is the square root. Remember, that makes this a 2. So if we're going to write this in the rational form, because it's already in the radical form, we're going to turn that into x to the 7 over 2 power. And that's all you have to do with that one. Okay. Um, okay, letter D here. The ninth root of x to the third, if you rewrite that rationally, um, you take the power divided by the root, so 3 divided by 9, which would be x to the 1 third power. Ooh, polka dots, sorry. Okay. Um, okay, last thing. Number 14 um, says write these expressions in simplest form. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to take the cube root of both of these things. So it's the cube root. Remember, it's the one-third. That's a cube root of negative 27. And then this would be x to the negative 9 times one-third is a negative 9 thirds. Okay. Um, better way to write that would be a negative 3 power. So this is negative 3 when we take the cube root of negative 27 and then x to the negative third, well, this 
is going to move to the bottom. Remember, this does not. That negative 3 doesn't move your 3 anywhere. You still have a negative 3 on top, but then x to the positive third power on bottom. Last one. Okay, let her be here. Um, I'm going to distribute that negative 6 to everything first. So this is going to be x negative 6 times 1 half is a negative third. And then this one, you have a negative 2 thirds times a negative 6. So that's a positive 12 thirds. Okay. Um, so what that does is that x to the negative third is going to move down, x to the positive third. y to the 12 thirds is y to the fourth. And that stays on top because it's positive. And that is your answer. Okay. Happy quizzing. If you have any questions, ask your neighbors. There are people around you that know how to do this. Ask them for help. They are capable and it's good to learn from each other. So um, that's all I got for you. Good luck on the quiz.